with Dr. Hanuman Chaudhary uh, and the other dignitaries on the dais <coughs> and friends. Mr. Venkatesh uh, electrified in his uh, inimitable style. I have heard him before. And um, what I have uh, proposed to present uh, in the context of uh, the UN, uh, the US sovereign debt downgrade and what it means to India. I would like to present a, a, a somewhat different perspective in terms of the conclusions, at least. Since I will have only 20 minutes, I'll try and read out because um, uh, that would help to uh, put across my propositions better. The India's chief economic advisor uh, stated that there are three key numbers in the context of the Indian economy for 2011-12, namely the fiscal deficit, the revenue deficit, and the government's borrowing program, which, according to him, at this black point in time, will be as per plan. Fiscal deficit is at around 4.6% of GDP against their earlier estimate of 5.1%. Captains of industry see that the Indian corporate sector is better placed, better prepared to face the consequences of this aftermath of the sovereign debt downgrade, mainly on account of the lessons learned after the global financial meltdown of 2008. The finance minister has placed the GDP growth projections at 8.2% for the current fiscal. But the major worry in the Indian context is the inflationary spiral, and particularly the unacceptable levels of food and primary products inflation, for whatever reason, supply side, demand side, whatever side, but the fact is that they are unacceptable levels of uh, food product and primary product inflation, which is expected to come down by six to 6% six by March 2012 from near double-digit inflation of 9.94% earlier this year. Stock markets have reacted quite sharply after the downgrade on the 5th stroke, 6th August. So I don't know how far, if it is the American situation, it was 5th, if it is the Indian calendar, it is the 6th. Stock markets have reacted quite um, sharply to this um, downward trend. And after the announcement of the downgrade on the 5th stroke 6th from AAA to AA plus, the reaction in the Indian context was more symbolic because the US downgrade was an inevitable conclusion given that country's acceptable, unacceptable debt levels. I think we, were, we have talked enough about that. But the last straw on the camel's back was provided by the standoff between the White House and the Congress that culminated in a last-minute deal, increasing the debt cap and averting a virtual bankruptcy situation in the short term. And this, this, was, this happened on the 1st of August. The portent signal was that in the context of most powerful nation in the world, there is weakness in reconciling economic and political issues. We talked about uh, uh, geopolitics and geoeconomics, even at the cost of nation. The fear of a double dip depression, which is also being talked about in the US, will most certainly have its implications, at least from an Indian perspective, on Indian IT and ITES. And added to this is the appreciation in the exchange rate, rupee versus dollar, which will be a sort of double whammy for this important service sector. The rest of Europe, about which I will also talk, and I will also talk about Japan, which has also gone into some, some relevant uh, event uh, from the 24th of August with the Prime Minister resigning, which also I will talk about, because there is a necessity to look at France, Germany, UK, and also Japan in the context of when we talk about US, because there are some parallels that we could draw. The rest of Europe is also under strain 
and the GDP growth in the Western world is projected to drop. Weakness in economic growth may be the most likely trigger of future downgrades, but there is unlikely to be an immediate reaction by the rating agencies. Rating outlook for UK and France is stable, and there is no downgrade expected for these countries in the next two years. The fundamentals can, of course, change, and a significant and sustained economic downturn seems the most likely trigger. While it is clear that many AAA rated countries, we talked about them, Dr. Hanuman Chaudhary mentioned about the Gurumurthy article which came on the 13th of August. While it is clear that many AAA rated countries have seen their fiscal position deteriorate, there is considerable lack of clarity as to where the line between AAA and AA rating should be drawn. And here I will spend a few minutes on this uh, aspect. In their late 2009, Moody's, another rating agency we have been talking about, S&P, stressed that because a sovereign issuer can, in extremis, improve their own creditworthiness via taxation, AAA, the extent to which there is that there is debt inconvenience rather than intolerable debt. This is how they they try to. Uh, differentiate. Debt as an inconvenience versus debt being intolerable as the difference between AAA and AA. Thus, the issue comes down to more than just level of debt. It concerns the cost of servicing the debt, the ability to raise finance, and the ability to reverse any increase in the level of debt. Moody's described these as affordability of debt, financeability of debt, and reversibility of debt. This is how Moody's put it. A very classic explanation of how when we analyze our own debt, we want to see, and because we have been worried about as to why is it that there is so much of perception in the US in terms of its strength, that people were prepared to invest all their savings. What caused this? And therefore, one need to look at affordability, financeability, and reversibility. Therefore, these issues are also relevant for the EU countries. And by and large, the fundamentals, I would say, of the US economy are sound in the sense when we talk about corporate balance sheets, they are strong. There is available productive capacity, and American consumers continue to spend. We have talked about their spending, albeit at a below average price pace. The problem is private investment. According to this analysis, the problem is private investment. Corporate investment, to a significant extent, has been affected by the weakening of confidence in the ability of policy and government to address medium-term structural problems, including public finance. That seems to be at the core of the American situation today, namely corporate investment confidence levels. Let us now turn to these three pillars because they are the sovereign ratings, namely affordability, financeability and reversibility. With particular reference to France, UK, US, to understand the rationale behind the downgrade and also draw lessons from an Indian perspective. Since Japan, which is a three trillion dollar US economy, with a debt level which is as much as $3 trillion, has been downgraded by Moody's on the 24th of August from AA2 to AA3, one notch as they called it, with their premier NATO can, uh, I suppose that's how it's pronounced, resigning on Friday last, and we need to compare the US versus the Japanese situation. Mr. Venkatesh addressed to this, the surging yen has made the task of maintaining exports quite difficult for Japan, building under the aftermath of the March 11 tsunami, the radiation effects from the Fukuyama Daiichi power plant, and also the affected soil, air, and water in that country. The reason for the Japanese downgrade, which has been the nation's debt and frequent changes in the government, Six Prime Ministers since 2006. I don't know what numerical 
numerological coincidences would be there. As compared to AA3 for Japan, accorded by Moody's, the comparative rating by the same agency for U US is AAA, based on the nation's ability to tap investors. The outlook for US is stable, while it is negative for Japan. For Japan, the rating by S&P is at the same level as was issued by Moody's in January, that is AA minus. Fitch, the other rating agency, has accorded AA minus with a negative outlook. But in all this, what is interesting is, and Mr. Venkatesh alluded to this, that while the Japanese never commented adversely to the ratings accorded by these agencies in the form of debt downgrade, the US were the, the US were particularly the White House was quite vociferous with the SP downgrade. The assertion was that the agency had overestimated the US future debt by over two trillion dollars. The reaction to SP, the reaction of SP to this, and which is very interesting, was stated very tersely, and the agency said, though its head thereafter submitted his resignation, and I think he is on his way out. Less stable, less effective, less predictable. This is how the this was the response of um, of uh, uh, SNP. Now let us analyze the three pillars of sovereign rating, and coming to affordability test. The test is the debt to GDP, besides budget balance, as we talked about, as a percentage of GDP. U.S. funding requirement is at 28.8 percent of GDP, which is the highest against 20.4 for France, 15.7 for UK. The expected changes in social security, we talked about social security, over the next 40 years, if added to this, would again weigh heavily against the US at the highest net present value of 168%, compared to 60% in France and 136 for UK. The current economic yield levels relative to GDP growth is low in the US because of the weak economic growth and household indebtedness. And I think this is a big problem as far as the US goes, and we talked about it. In France, the problem is one of already high taxes and a large public sector combined, which affects the ability to alter the fiscal situation in the absence of GDP growth. On the next pillar of debt financeability, UK has an advantage over US and France because of the significantly longer average maturity of its debt and lower percentage of foreign ownership. Lastly, on debt reversibility, UK leads with a tightening program of its fiscal situation. You saw some of the street happenings very recently, starting from Tottenham and moving across to Birmingham and Liverpool as a consequence of the fiscal tightening. France has to rely on economic growth and spending cuts to reverse the debt burden, but these are easier said than done. The, 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 the ceiling negotiations by increasing the US cap to 2.1 trillion and reduction in debt to 2.4 trillion voted by Senate came only after so much of painful negotiations, and this has left a large credibility gap in the US with regard to the nation's ability to follow fiscal movement. What is the India position? A recent paper on global development finance of the World Bank would place India as the fifth highest indebted nation among 20 developing countries. India's external debt grew from 172 billion to 261.5 billion during the period 2006 to 2009 10. According to World Bank report, the debt GDP ratio has come down from 28.7% to 5.5% in the same period, while the servicing ratio has dropped from 35.3% to 5.5% in the same period. But the problem today for India, according to my submission, is after the debt crisis in Greece, Portugal, Ireland, it seems that it is spreading to the Eurozone, to Spain and Italy as well. This is something which may Im impact India if the contagion spreads, because we cannot assume that we are permanently insulated from the global threat. The current inflationary spiral in India is also the result 
of a fair degree of imported in inflation in commodities. The turnaround in the U.S. fiscal debt is important not only for the health of the U.S. economy, but also for the well-being of the global economy. The downgrade is therefore a clarion call for both the U.S. authorities and the global economy to confront the issues of U.S. fiscal deficit more realistically. Given the importance of U.S. in the world economy and the reserve currency status of the U.S. dollar, Dr. Harman Chaudhary mentioned about that, it is clearly in the global interest that U.S. effectively addresses its fiscal challenge and that the global economy does what it has to help the U.S. economy achieve its fiscal consolidation and return to health. We talked about our culture. We talked about our tolerance. We talked about harmony. I think one of the key things that we need to do as part of this part of the, the East Asian economy is to look at the reality and see not how America can go down, but to see how we can help America. Because otherwise, there is going to be, in my view, a, a serious issue which would which would remain unaddressed. US today is more than 25% of world GDP. And from an India perspective, during January, May 2008, the exports on an average to US were 12 billion US dollars per month. And this has grown to 16.6 per month in the same period in 2011. India's exposure to US debt, it was talked about 41 billion, 14th largest holder of US treasuries. And China, 1.15 was also mentioned. For India, a recession in the West would be a short-term benefit since commodity and crude prices would come down, giving a much needed respite from the inflationary spiral. Also, the government has placed reliance for the growth momentum on domestic consumption and domestic growth in the local market depending on global developments. Secondly, foreign exchange reserve management. Therefore, the, the, the foreign exchange reserve management becomes important and these economies from an India perspective, should go in for slow and graduated readjustment. Three things are required. In the Guru Murthy paper, he talks about penetration, he talks about foreign exchange reserves, and he also talks about the aspect of uh, uh, how to uh, really address the issue relating to uh, trade. But three essential things are required. One is, in my view, institutional mechanism within the country watching global developments as indeed what RBI has done and strengthening of those institutions is a very important aspect which has to be very closely monitored and managed. Therefore, strengthening those institutions including the financial council would be very, very important. With this perspective, namely watching the global developments as they are unleashing and what sort of response because some degree of protection for the Indian rupee, as he said, Mr. Venkatesh mentioned, becomes very important. The second one is we will have to buy American products for which they will have to then sell, which we have talked about. Instead of placing all our savings there, there is need to also import there is also a need to see that we encourage manufacturing in the US. And this is not only speaking about India, about all those emerging economies which we talked about, right from Taiwan and, and uh, Korea, which have got surpluses, which they have kept them invested. So it is not a one-way street. If we look at it as a one-way street, there is going to be further black bar after 2008, which will be, which will be uh, waiting. And thirdly, we talked about so much of reserves being there, which is all invested and kept there. The international trade and the large proportion of US in the international trade. If you withdraw all your money from here and do a Saddam Hussein, we will then have serious consequences in the world. So three essential things which I would submit. One is India institutional mechanism to monitor the aftermath of what has happened. As corporates have said, we are better placed now, better equipped now, better one now, better forensically uh, uh, charged now to deal with this situation. 
so therefore institutional strengthening for specifically for addressing this issue of american disability secondly providing a helping hand to america not distancing yourself away saying i can be self contained i can watch my own affairs america should watch my own affairs and therefore let there be disconnect i i would submit may lead to possibly one more blood bath as we had they may have had something in 1930s there after in 80s and then in 2008 one more may be there the third one is to look at how can we bring about other currencies maybe a, a r and b or maybe something else which can then over a period of time also have the reserve currency states as crisis would put it should the global growth weaken further india will be impacted the main cause for concern is infrastructure and power project funding which could impact the long term growth of the economy and i am glad that mr Uh, Vengatesh has said that by 2018 we will find our own money to deal with this uh, with this funding process, and that would then put us on a on a permanently uh, 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 better situation to deal with poverty, which is still a major concern as far as our economy goes. Thank you very much.